Sego, and welcome to Let's Talk Native. I'm John Kane, and I welcome you on this Saturday, October 19th. While this program may not provide a path to spiritual enlightenment, we do encourage and in some cases start conversations. We don't do prayers or buffalo speeches. We take a tough look at our history, oppression, and survival. We talk about culture, the arts, politics, and identity, and we may step on a few toes along the way. But our real goal here is to break down, is to bring people together by breaking down what separates us. Uh, we will take on the false narratives and provide critical thinking to all that is heaped upon us, and we do it all right here from the Cattaraugus territory of the Seneca Nation. So let's talk native. But before uh, we start, let, uh, let me remind people that you can stream this uh, audio on our website, which is www.letstalknative.com. You can uh, stream the video of this on, uh, on Facebook. So we, we post this thing as a live stream on a bunch of uh, uh, Facebook group pages via Facebook Live. We take the audio and we put it up on SoundCloud and it becomes a podcast on any of your favorite podcast platforms. We take the video and we put it up on YouTube, our YouTube channel, which is Let's Talk Native TV. I encourage people to subscribe to our podcast, uh, again, using whatever uh, platform you desire. And I also encourage people to, to sign up. We're almost at 500 subscribers on our, uh, on our YouTube channel. And I'd love to uh, you know kick that over the top. So uh, for those of you um, who, have, who have really been great at sharing uh, some of our videos including the last video that we uh, put out on uh, on columbus in his own words um i i still encourage people to, to subscribe because we will do be, be doing more of that and it's a little bit of the topic that i'm going to talk about not sp just specifically you know our videos but um but we'll, we'll get into that in, in just a moment uh but i am john kane i'm the host and producer of the show i'm joined in studio by jake proud uh, who is managing our audio and our video? And uh, well, let's just let's just get to it. I want to, you know, I mentioned always in my intro that we discuss the arts, and I don't do it enough, so I'm going to do that tonight. I'm going to talk about the arts, and and I realize that can be a really really broad um, topic, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hit on as many elements of it as uh, as I can, and and part of the reason I think it's so important is because it, you know it is. The arts are where the creative mind um, is nurtured and it's shared. There are so many ways to communicate uh, everything from, you know, our social justice battles, our, our identity, so many ways of doing that um, through the various arts, I mean, uh, art forms. And whether we're talking about visual arts, you know, painting, sculptures, um, uh, you know, everything from, you know, creation of, of wampum belts to jewelry, uh, beadwork, you know, uh, I mean, there's, there's, there's so many ways with, with the visual arts that you, that you capture things, but we're at a, at a point in our history and our development that we're well beyond just the visual arts. I mean, and we've always been somewhat involved in the performance arts, music and dance has always been a part of native, um, native culture, but now we have theater, we have stage, we have film, we have, uh, TV, um, we have cable, we have radio, we have the internet. There, there are so many different places that that some you know, that the arts can be encouraged. And and again, from visual arts to performance art. Uh, you know, one, one of my friends, uh, you know, Greg Deal does a lot with visual arts, but he also does performance art. And the challenge is, where are the venues? Where do we? How do we, as a people or peoples, how do we embrace this? Look. In, in other cultures, in, in, in other, you know, uh, groups of peoples, there's all kinds of resources to support the arts. I mean, you, so whether you're talking about the, the radio industry and, and, and how much they, you know, uh, uh, you know, how the mainstream musical artists are support are supported or, you know, or, you know, Hollywood, what, you know, what, what, you know, what they do and, and the direction that they go in. And look, there, there are groups of people who have made huge inroads uh, in asserting their presence. So the black community, the Asian community, I mean, uh, uh, globally, what, what comes out of India and, uh, and, and, and Korea and, and, and China. And so I mean, there's so many examples of, of, of peoples who have asserted themselves. Africa, I mean, Africa is the resurgence and, and the strength that, that, that they are putting forth um, in not only in, the, in the, the origins of so much of what we consider contemporary music, but now reclaiming some of the uh, presence in that music. But but native people, we really struggle. We really struggle to to accomplish this, and and it's not because we don't have the talent. Look, we've we've got great musicians. One of the reasons that that 
um, you know, purposes of the show is to is to do that is to support the uh, is to, is to support the arts. We we try to open with with, with artists. A lot of times we're opening with uh, with a relatively few. You know, it's a small group. I mean, Murray Porter is is you know among my my favorites, and I'll tell you why, because he takes music and he makes a specific a specific stance on social justice issues with with every album that that he produces. So so, so if you go way back to Who Found Who and you know White Man's Card and um and, and of course his last two uh, CDs, you know, with with some of the stuff that he did for Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and. Uh, you know, addressing residential schools, and and now as we look at um, his, his latest CD, he he always makes a a strong political statement with his music, and you know, and it's blues, but it's it's a version of of blues and and rock, I, I guess you will, that that allows him to do uh, to take shots at, at at all of these issues. Now, I'm not I'm not, say, not saying that he's the only one, but he does it consistently, and and I'm not saying all native. Um, um, artisanship has to be geared towards making a political statement, but when when you're doing some things like performance art, so whether it's music or theater or stage or whatever else, there is you know, there should be an effort. And and I don't mean to just single out Murray. I mean I, I think about the uh, the 1491s and, and some of the the great work that they've done, both comedy sketches, but even some of their again their strong social justice uh, messages. And and there there are other music. I mean Frank Juan and uh, uh, the, the hip hop artists. He's and we play a bunch of his music here. He makes a strong statement, but again, we as a, as a native, or as a or as native communities, we need to do more. And and I do call upon you know, especially not just the affluent native people, but the affluent native territories, those casino based territories that uh, that you know that have not only the resources, but they have the venues. I don't know anybody who's created. A theater company. I don't, you know, you know, on a territory with, you know, with the resources to have a stage and, and, and an actual theater. And there's no reason not to. We've got plenty of, you know, plenty of great venues that we could we could use for that. But and that was one of the things that I, you know, that I felt strongly about when uh, the Senecas were developing their Buffalo Creek Casino. You know, rather than you know the the whole you know doing a hotel build, which they haven't done, but uh, rather than doing that kind of development. Fitting it within the downtown and and some of what Buffalo has asserted as a as a strong you know theater uh, city, uh, how great would it have been if the Seneca Nation created uh, a a a stage and a, and a theater for uh, for for native performance art? You know, and, and I know these things aren't necessarily you know these huge profit makers. And 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 look, it is it's the rare it's the rare exception that a native performer has you know this over the top commercial success so you, you it's obvious that what drives this kind of creativity is not necessarily uh fame and or more importantly fortune but there's no reason that we can't support it more you know i i think about, again murray porter you know kind of a, a local guy done a bunch of music here in cataraugus from six nations and and he ha drives most of his success from being on the west coast and it, and and part of it is look we love it when Ron Murray Porter comes back to town, but you know it's it's not like there is um, a strong enough um, commercial value for you know or we don't create commercial value for him to be here so we don't have the the venues and and of course you know with, with certain uh, you know types of art like uh, like music you you have a tendency to to make a connection between. The bars and nightclubs and and that kind of stuff and which yeah, may not be the the best connection that we want, but I guess the the what I wanted to do with this show was was to throw some ideas out. I want to give credit where credit's due. And that's why I'm talking about guys like Murray Porter. I also want to you know give credit to the Seneca Nation for consistently supporting the Native American Music Awards, which is in two weeks, by the way. Um, and that's going to adjust our schedule, by the way. I'll I'll say that now, but I'll talk about it before the end of the show. I mean, the Native American Music Awards is one of the only, you know, one of the few institutions, essentially, that whose job it is is to support n n Native musicians and artists. And you know, and I and I think it's important. I think there should be more done with it. <laughs> so, I'm, uh, as much as I'm praising the Santa Nation for consistently being not only the the, the home of the Nammies, but um, 
but giving it some support. But that's been a bit of a challenge sometimes over the years. I mean, they're the the casino, the the management of the casinos never saw it profitable enough to want to do it. I and mean, it's almost like it had to be pushed from you know again by the Seneca people themselves and Seneca Council and others to say no, this is important to us. But you can almost feel like the, it, there's almost this you know begrudgingness that that is associated with it in terms of you know again the venue versus you know the people who own the venue. So, but again, it, I, I I applaud the Seneca Nation for maintaining the commitment towards it. But I think more territories, more communities, and and frankly, even more from the Seneca Nation uh, could occur to support Native artists. You know, and like I said, uh, it, it'd be great to, to see um, some level, creating some support systems, financial support systems for, for the startup of, of a theater company. There are a lot of philanthropic organizations outside, non-Native philanthropic organizations that'll support the arts. But we don't even we don't even tap into any of those, or, or uh, and and I don't know if we have enough of a a footing to even open up those doors. And I think if we had some you know some seed money for some of that stuff, um, it would probably be easier for us to do it. I I don't think that there's a conspiracy against this. I just think it's it's us just not doing it. So I I think theater is important. And you know and and I'm biased. Uh, you know I I was a bit of a, a theater junkie when I was when I was younger. Um, but I think theater is a good way to express because you can do it in so many different ways. You can do it dramatically. You can do it through comedy. Uh, you know, you can do it through music, uh, you know, musical theater. And I think that we have, we have talented people. Look, we, we know we have, we have, uh, people who can act, you know, uh, uh, actors and actresses that, that can, that can, you know, pull off anything that is presented to them. But, but again, if you look at the, the history of, um, of theater, um, cinematic and uh, and stage, you know, there, there's always been more non-native people playing the roles of native of native people. Even animation, you know, the the, the voiceovers, it's been hard to get native people to uh, to have the uh, a, a proper a proper seat at that table. So knowing what Hollywood, in many ways, has done to native people because of their control over that that process and and, and that venue. We still haven't, you know, pushed back. Look, we've got some filmmakers. We, we, we you know, um, uh, you know, I, I think about uh, films like uh, Drunk Town's Finest by Sidney Freeland and um, and the great work that uh, uh, Ayers and those guys did with with Smoke Signals. I mean, look, th- that's that's great. But these are still the exception to the rule. Look, we do have the Sundance um, uh, Film Institute, but that's not a native organization. But we, you know, so Redford's organization does have a, a native film division. And and again, if more territory supported that, we could actually be a venue for some of for, for even perhaps that organization or do a parallel organization. But we could do more. You know, Buffalo in general has started to become a little bit. Uh, they they've had a lot more films that have uh, been uh, produced in the Buffalo region. There, there's probably an opportunity, even with some commercial value, to have you know a little bit more. Um, presence in in the in that theater uh um field uh, and and including studio capability and uh film and you know uh audio and and video these are some of the things that we can do to support a full range of careers even i mean see that's the other thing that that i c- got to come back to when we talk about what we need to do in our communities to create um uh a better quality of life we do have to create opportunities and the opportunity shouldn't just be work for the, for the government, you know, the native government, the tribe, as it's called in most places, work for the casino or don't work. I mean, we should have more options than that. And of course, in, in, in many of our territories here, we have a somewhat of a vibrant um, private sector. So we, we've got smoke shops and gas stations and that kind of stuff. I mean, but there still are very limited opportunities and there's a huge disparity between the haves and the have nots in every native territory. And that exists even here. I mean, in, in Seneca nation. So what do we do to create more opportunities? Well, and I, and I think the idea of supporting the arts, I mean, I look, and, and there's a, there's a um, Seneca um, uh, roots. It's called the, the, um, the arts guild that, that exists here. Um, so, I, you know, it's not like we don't, we haven't started that process, but in terms of funding, in terms of really putting an investment into uh, in how we support 
all of this, you know, all of these th these various opportunities that 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 I'm fitting in within that broader umbrella of the arts. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go through and break down some of this. I mean, when we talk about theater, some of that theater, you know, can be, you know, kind of, you know, very, you know, um, almost the kind of pageantry that goes with traditional music and dance. There's that, and you know, and that's been done before, but 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 not in the way that it could be. I mean, let's face it: if you're a native dancer and you do the powwow circuit or whatever else, that's what you're limited to. The idea of, of you know, I, I, Joe Anderson was doing a, a bit of a show up there in Niagara Falls for a while. Some of the the dancers that usually have to go out on the powwow trail were, were being hired by him to, to, to do some shows. I don't, uh, I, I never I had the opportunity to catch one of them, but but at least there was that. But, and that was the start of something. So I, I give, I'll, I'll give Joe credit for at least, you know, beginning that process. But, but where is everybody else? And I'm not just talking, about, I'm not picking on the Seneca Nation. I mean, Foxwood, Mohican Sun, all these uh, these, you know, these very big casino um, and hospitality uh, companies that that are again uh, native owned. When do we do more? So, do we put together, you know, um, a a funding mechanism, uh, you know, some philanthropic organization that can support um, native people in the arts? We, um, we look, we've had some some very successful uh, actors and actresses. I've had a few of them here in, in studio. Um, uh, Ms. Horn and um, and I'm going to draw um, a blank right now on my buddy who goes by Leo Justice on, on Facebook. Um, huh? Right? Oh, yeah, Arthur Reckloud. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, uh, having Arthur in, in studio. Um, I mean, it, it, I mean, it, again, we're a humble little place here, but we've, we've had some guys who have had major motion picture, uh, you know, exposure, but what do we do to, to support that? Um, you know, on the, on the Canadian side, there's a lot more native presence in television, but not so much here. And, and we don't play a role. You know, I think about, even even the public radio station that exists um, in in the Western New York area, Buffalo, WBFO and NED, uh, WNED TV, we have very little presence on there. I used to joke that the only way I can get on WBFO is to go to Albany and join Susan Arbetter in the Capitol Press Room, and and I'm not talking theater there, but I'm just saying, you know, when when you consider the the um, what is in a in an area and how we still haven't figured out how to, you know, how to break in, so to speak, or break out, depending on what you, how you want to look at it. But I think the idea of supporting um, theater at, at the, at the stage level, look, even simple little, you know, PSAs and videos, the videos that we do, I'm, I, I don't know. If I would, wouldn't call what we're doing. I guess it's, it's, it is art. No, but we're not trying to make a, um, I'm not tr tr trying to uh, suggest that, that I'm an artist. Jake is more of an artist than I am in creating the videos. But we don't get the kind of support that we should. The 1491s have done some great stuff. I mean, their, their piece on, um, on uh, violence against ind indigenous women, I look at that thing, and I've shared that video, long form and short form, uh, easily hundreds of times now. And... That you know, the last I saw it was it was like at about forty or fifty thousand views. And like I said, a squirrel video gets a million views, and something as powerful as some of what, <laughs> what these guys have done, and they've done some great stuff that is you know that's light and funny and um, you know really entertaining. But we don't have anything, any systems in place, any infrastructure to support some of the stuff. Even though we, there are people that are out there trying to do it. I mean, what what I do here is is something that's supported by but literally a handful of people. And part of the, what, the reason that I, do, that I do this is so others will be encouraged to do it. You know, the, the biggest worry that I have is that, you know, that we fail at this. And then people say, oh, I'm never going to try that. Look what happened to John Cain. No, I want people to say, I like what John Cain's doing and he seems to be making it. Let me, maybe I can do something that he can't. And people who you know, have friends in high places, perhaps they can get better funding. You know, one of our sponsors is, um, is Grand River Enterprises and they've done some great things to, to support some artists on, uh, in six nations, Logan stats, uh, who, you know, we play some of his music here. He has had some support. They, they I think they built some studio capability as well. If I, if I understand, I don't, I'm, I'm not fully, uh, um, 
and knowledgeable about what they've what they've got. But but they've done some. But again, you you can find you know these singular examples of this, but but not a broad based approach. And and we need to do. I mean, we don't have. Do, we need to do more again with our, our, our cultural centers and our museums to do more, uh, more, uh, gallery exhibits of, uh, of, of different artists and look, not just the, uh, the ones that, uh, that, that have passed. I, you know, I, I at one time wanted, was trying to do a, uh, an exhibit in New York of Louis Hall's work. Um, started to ha- at least began to have a conversation. I was going, um, the, the ground floor of the Venezuelan consulate, uh, is, uh, has a gallery. And I had began some talks of, uh, in trying to do uh, do an exhibit there. I thought that would have been powerful, knowing, you know, the, you know the history of Simon Bolivar and the Bolivarian Revolution that uh, gained so much independence for for South America. I thought Louis would be a perfect person to you know to, to be featured in their gallery. Yeah, I never I, I never accomplished it, but somebody else t- still could, and we should do more of that. We have the spaces and. And not just the spaces within our cultural centers. We have the foot traffic that goes through these casinos. You know, Santa Nation has three uh, three casinos that that have a, a fairly substantial traffic that goes through them. There's no reason not to use a space to 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 promote the uh, the, the arts and and the artists that we they, that we have, and not just within a specific territory, but more broadly. You know, and we we should do more to encourage and and support the actors and the actresses. And, and, you know, and, and we need to come up with ways to do that, but we also should encourage our, our writers and, and, and our filmmakers and, you know, and again, you know, the, the ones who, who want to, I mean, I, I put a, I, I tried to do a pitch at one point to do a documentary on our, our fight with the, with the state, but to come up with, you know, even, you know, 50 or a hundred thousand dollars to do something like that. It's that, that's a hard squeeze in some territories and it should be. I mean, there are, there are, I mean, look, I mean, we, I've had friends uh, who are filmmakers who, from the outside who come in and you know that they're, 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 they're packing, you know, four or five, six thousand dollar cameras. And, you know, and, you know, look, we have our four or five hundred dollar cameras, but, uh, but you know that they've got, they found, you know, support within the artist community, with the film community to, to do some of that. And, you know, and and it's and these are, these are the challenges that we have, and the challenges that we can overcome. So I want to do more to advocate uh, support for the arts and for for artists. And and so whether you're a basket maker or or you know the beadwork. Look, when I think about beadwork, I I I can't I can't ignore you know what happened at, when when Tim McGraw came to town and uh, and the Seneca Nation who hosted the the concert up in the Niagara Falls Casino gave him a gift. They gave him a guitar strap that was uh, beaded by Jackie Snyder. And now we see that all over the internet. Every time you know, Tim McGraw performs, he, this, it, he, he didn't just wear it for our, uh, for our purposes. He, you know, he did some concerts down, uh, down in Florida. So every time he, sh- he shows up in a, in a, you know, on a video someplace, I mean, you're seeing the work of Jackie Snyder. Now we all take a little bit of pride in that, even though it was her, not us, right? We're all proud of what she did, but, that's just one example of, you know, uh, of, of artistry that we have within our communities all the time. Um, uh, Cornhouse doll makers. I mean, uh, uh, the clothing, uh, the, the apparel, uh, you know, um, uh, Faye Lone and some of the work that she tries to do. There, there's so many people who are trying to do so many different things. There are, we have people who have gone to the, the Fashion Institute in New York to, to study fashion. And, and I don't know, these are tough markets, but we don't, as a people, I mean, oftentimes the, the, where our, uh, our creativity is going to be funded is from the outside. You know, we, we hope we're going to find, you know, some executive who's going to buy, you know, some of our art for their offices or, you know, or maybe, maybe get a contract to throw some, you know, uh, uh, some, some sculptures in a casino or something like that. But on an ongoing ba- uh, basis, we need we need to do more. So you know, part of what I'm doing with the show is I'm putting a call out, and I'm saying to all of you um, folks with the resources. So whether you're you're individuals or whether you are um, one of the gaming venues, one of the you know, territories that that you know has a fair amount of affluence because of your gaming facilities, or 
or wh whatever it is that that has given you some uh, uh, some level of commercial success, especially if you're involved in hospitality, there's a direct connection between hospitality and uh, and the uh, and the arts. I mean, it the arts are, are go hand in glove with that. So whether it's theater, whether it's music, we need to do more. You know, one of the things that I, that I uh, you know, again one of the suggestions I had even with the Native American Music Awards was to not let it just be a singular event once a year. The Seneca Nation has a radio station. That's, a, that's another venue altogether. That, could have, that station could have done more to be the station of the NAMIs. And they could have been uh, uh, done more to, to, to feature a lot of the artists who have a, have a very difficult time getting airplay anyplace. So when the NAMIs comes around, and then we all, you know, download our, our ballots to, you know, to vote for artists. We're hard pressed to to know who some of those artists are because there's no, we don't have any place to listen to that music. So, you know, if it weren't for the NAMIs, we wouldn't be exposed to some of this stuff at all. But we could do more. We should have radio stations that are not just trying to be commercial successes, that are serving the Native community with with Native content. That's more of what we what we need to do. I mean, um, I, I did an event in New York uh, just uh, just last night, and and I was and part of what I was talking about. In fact, my last show, what I was talking about was was Native people in the media, and media is entertainment. And we ha we have to ask that question: How do we create our own opportunities? Because the 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 mainstream media is not really going to avail itself to us. A, we'll have a few breakout breakout individuals break out break out artists i mean when we think about um uh come and get your love being played you know uh, being played at uh, uh as part of the guardians of the galaxy uh, uh, a film the, the soundtrack i mean that's you know re, you know getting everybody all of a sudden falling in love with redbone that, that was great but that's the exception to the rule the the film rumble probably you know did more to to tell people you didn't even know these people were native artists you, you didn't know you know uh you know jesse Ed davis you didn't know mildred bailey you didn't you you may not have been that familiar with buffy saint marie and uh, and pura fey then when you you watch the film you say jimmy hendrix was cherokee but but again you know so i, I think being able to, to to demonstrate some of that and put some of that stuff out there is great but it, 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 we shouldn't just be telling the story of somebody who uh, who made it through all that adversity. We should be doing something to to minimize that adversity. By the way, um, one of the host for the for the NAMIs this year, um, the, the main host is uh, is West Studio, who's West Studio, who's going to receive an Academy Award, the first Native actor to receive an Academy Award. He's going to co-host with Mickey James. So I mean, we're at the bottom there. So we'll, we'll take a break here and we'll come back. But I, I want to. Go through a little bit more about um, about what opportunities there really are, and we'll, so we'll talk about them when we come back. This is John Kane. This is Let's Talk Native. I've got just enough bread to keep above the water, and just enough fire to keep from tapping out. I've got just enough. on the cover but it's the cover of the slammer and who knows when I'll get bailed out Just enough arrogance to get 
myself right back in I've got just enough hope Think someday I'll make it Now be damned if I let them take that away from me again Cause I think times is harder than the drugs that Thanks for coming back. This is John Kane, and this is Let's Talk Native. We are talking about the arts today, uh, but before let me, let me do that, let me uh, thank my sponsors. I want to because sponsorship is a big deal. It's the big deal to this, but it's it's really connected to what we're talking about here. So I want to thank Ross and Holly John and the uh, RJE family of businesses, Eric White and ERW Enterprises, um, and again my good friends at NWS and GRE who support the show, uh, and others who who have made contributions. And, you know, again, I've got friends that, you know, guys like Harry Wallace and, uh, uh, Dr. Shaw Bay and, uh, my, my good friends, uh, uh, BJ and others who, who make contributions that not only help me do this show, they help me make the trip to New York to do my show down there. And, um, and when anytime I find myself in a jam, whether we need a new piece of equipment or whatever else, uh, you know, it seems like people step up. So I, I want to th- thank those folks, but, um, um, and I also want to thank all of you who share the show. That's a big part of what we're what we do with this is we we try to encourage the the sharing of our videos, um, our audio. Um, I'm proud to say that uh, our our Columbus's uh, Columbus in his own words video uh, uh, has gone over two thousand views. You know, I know for some for some people that may not seem like a big number. For us, that's a big number, and um, and and I'm glad to see that a lot of that comes from people sharing the videos on uh, links to the videos on Facebook and Twitter and other places. So um, all of you who share the show, um, who share the videos, who share the audio, um, I'm grateful to all of you. And, and that includes my wife who helps uh, post this, uh, this Facebook live stream on, um, on other group pages. So, um, all right. So look, I was talking about what we need to do to, uh, to support artists and, and the, you know this can be a range of things. Obviously, there are um, there can be just you know funding mechanisms put put in place. You know um, these philanthropic organizations that can help. You know that, that if somebody has an idea, you know, a playwright, or you know um, perhaps perhaps somebody has a screenplay or, or something that, that they 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 want to um, uh, develop. Uh, you know, I know that there's, you know, again, Sundance Film Institute has a, um, has a school for that and, and they offer some support. 
But that's a pretty exclusive club. But if, you know, if the, if the Seneca Nation or if any one of these territories that uh, you know that wants to support their own people in these in these fields, they could they could do more and and create a program, you know, create a program that that could be not just um, nation funds, but let individuals support to it. I mean, we we always seem to have this I don't know this this almost a feud, if you will, or this you know, this battle between. Um, the resources of of a of a nation or um, a native territory in the governance, you know, the the, the governing, uh, you know, the the budgets associated with with their administrations and the private sector. There are some things that we could do that, that would join those people to get those two, you know, efforts together. And you know, there is more that we could do in terms of, like I said, Second Nation has a radio station, and and it still struggles, you know, and it doesn't. It probably doesn't provide the service that many people wish it does. Um, but, you know, look, the Santa Cruz took that plunge. They, they they took that step to do a, a radio station. And and I think more than just criticism, I think suggestions need to be made on, on how to make it more, not just commercially successful, but more successful in terms of a service to its community. How do you, how do you let that thing become part of the support for the arts, for musicians, for, you know, um, uh, you know, basically, you know, calls out to the community to, uh, for for everything from informing people about rallies and uh, and and actions that people should be involved in, but but also supporting the, again the the arts more more generally. I mean, music is music and, uh, and radio is, is is an easy you know connection to uh, to make, but there there could be more than that. There. Um, there are these PSAs, the public service announcements that can be both video and audio. Let, you know, let there be a bit more of a program with, within their own radio station to support creation of these public service announcements. These, these, again, these, these audio clips that could uh, not only advocate for certain issues, but, or, or certain entities like the Seneca nation or the Seneca people our youth or whatever, but see, this is what we can do with radio. Now there's no reason that we, we couldn't do more within uh, on, on the internet from a, uh, from a video standpoint or on local cable access or, or whatever, we should be doing more there too. And, and why not? We live in a world now where the idea of creating a film doesn't have to cost $10 million. I mean, the idea of, of, of doing a full length uh, a motion picture for, for 50 or a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, that's, that's very, very low budget, but, it, but it's doable. And that's not a lot of money. You know, so, you know, whether, you, you know, I've I pitched the idea of doing a documentary. There's a couple that I'd like to do. I'd like to do a, a follow-up documentary to the Doctrine of Discovery film that uh, Stephen Newcomb and uh, Sheldon Wolfchild did. I'd, I'd love to do something along those lines. But there's a lot of stories that we simply never tell. And you know what? They're not, the, the outside isn't, isn't banging down our door to tell these stories. So we should tell them. And there's a, I mean, the Seneca history alone, everything from, you know, Thomas Indian School to... Uh, the Kinzua Dam. There, there is so much history, and there are so many people who have crossed through, and um, you know, even you know, iconic po figures like Johnny Cash, and and you know, so you think about the people who've, who we've interacted with uh, in in this community that you know, that could be a part of some of those stories. So the the story we we have all the material, we have all the story, and we we in all likelihood have some of the talent. Now, whether our writing skills have develop, developed there or not. We should, but we certainly should do more. And, you know, so when we talk about media and we talk about TV or radio or, or the internet, we should do more. Um, I, social media is another area. There was a, a well-funded initiative that put on by, I want to say it was the Coeur d'Alene, I think it was. Um, and they developed a whole platform, social media platform <laughs> called ResCast. I used to use them. As soon as they, they launched... I was, uh, you know, I would became a subscriber. I was, I was a member. I'm still a member. Um, it's, it's marginalized now, but I used to put all of my audio, every show that I did, you know, from the very beginning was, was on rescue. And you can still find some of them there. It's, it's a little harder now, but um, uh, it's crashed a few times, but, but again, it never had the full support and you could put video, you could put audio. There was some great videos on, on the battles in, in, uh, in Grand River and six nations over, um, uh, uh, you know, over the housing development, uh, Caledonia, all, all of that. There were some great videos that were done. 
Um, that's where, you know, again, some of the, the 1491 videos were, were posted up. But but th there haven't, and, and, and that, the failure of ResCast, that was R-E-Z-K-A-S-T, you can still look it up. Um, or the the lack of success of Rescast because because it, it still exists it really had to do with with not being able to build subscribers. I mean, it's amazing to me when I look at some of the Facebook group pages. How many you know thousands and thousands of people are on on these Facebook group pages, and yet we couldn't fill up a big enough. It was a free service, so it didn't cost anything. But see, this is the the very thing that I'm talking about. We should do more to create our, you know, a server base, uh, create, uh, you know, our own social media um, uh, platforms. And, and again, it's not to um, tell people don't use Facebook, but if you're going to use Facebook, how about using this too? And, and it doesn't have to have, you know, a billion subscribers like Facebook. We can do this so, so that it serves our needs and our communities. It's something that we can, monitor some of the, you know, the, the the trolls and some of the creeps that uh you know that seem to um flood some of these other internet sources but i mean that that's just another thing i, I wanted to throw out there um um yeah so when we're, when we're thinking about how what it is that we need to do to support the arts there there are some major in, infrastructure builds that we can do you know we again uh, i would love to see a um a on the Canadian side they have the Aboriginal People's Television Network APTN. We don't have anything like that uh, on the on the U.S. side. And some said that the APTN was going to try to create a U.S. side, but um or a U.S. presence. But we don't need another entity. We could we could do that some of that stuff ourselves. We we could slowly degrade. There was um I, I think there was an effort to create some uh, a, a First Nations you know um network i guess but again not not broadly supported enough to, to make it fly and this is stuff we, we need to consolidate where we can and in in the in the uh in the spaces that we can create our own venues we should create those venues we should make sure that that a poet and a writer and a, and a um an actor or you know or whomever any anybody involved in performance art again let's let's build a theater and and let's encourage um, native playwrights. Let's create. Let let's encourage the creativity of uh, of stage. I saw a great play that uh, that addressed the mascot issue down in, in New Jersey, and it was called Indian Head. And it was this whole idea of using, you know, the native head plastered on the side of a, of a mascot or or on the side of a helmet or on on a gymnasium floor. And that wasn't produced by native. It had a couple of native actors, uh, uh, actresses in it, but that wasn't native produced. Why aren't we telling our own stories? And and uh, and again, even if we're even if we're not great at it coming out of the gate, the only way we're going to develop is to begin this thing. Look, I know a lot of what what I do with with Let's Talk Native and uh, and and our studio here and, and the uh, Let's Talk Native TV. Look, we're trying to improve what we do there too. I mean, you know, our early our early videos were crude. There was some, you know, we we tried to do some things with equipment and and develop a, a, a bit more of of a, a creative and, and an artistic eye. So the things that we're producing are more palatable. So so the the message that we're trying to communicate. But I I'll, I'll tell you, this is the, this is why we need we need more people doing it. We we need people to participate and. And and come up with with ideas for for you know so whether it's for short form videos whether it's for public service announcements I mean there is no reason that 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 our own people should not be supported with um with these resources for for information and there's no reason that the non native community doesn't know more you know I we go through I go through this all the time because you know like I said I did an event last night at a bookstore in in Brooklyn overlooking the waterfront. Um, and, you know, again, I look at that crowd and it's a diverse crowd, no native people in the crowd, but, uh, it was a diverse crowd. And I know that I'm telling them stuff that they've never heard before. And, and it's not like the information's not available. People just don't know to look. If we're not putting that information together, if we're not communicating to our own people and to the people close around us, then that's, that's kind of on us. And that is part of the creativity. Uh, you know, so when we talk about the arts, it isn't just um, 
uh, you know, fiction that we have to, I mean, look, we need to support our writers who are prepared to write, do investigative journalism and who are willing to, to tell stories. And, and the thing is that many of our stories that are, that are bound to our culture, we haven't, I don't know if there's a sense that if we put it to pen that, that we somehow diminished its value. Look, I know we have an oral tradition. And you know what? There's, there's not going to be one written version of a story. That's the, that's the other beauty of it. Everybody who has a, you know, a slightly different view of what this story means or what that story means, we, we all should write that. We should all take a crack at it. And, and, and nobody should be considered the definitive you know, um, version of, a, of what is considered a traditional story, but just another version. I've heard 10 different versions of the, uh, of, of the, of the story of the Gondolwida and Hayawenta. They vary. I mean, even at these, you know, these uh, great law recitals. So why not, why not put something down to pen? Why not create the story? Why not do a theatrical, theatrical production of it? I mean, and not everybody's going to like every version that, that's put out there, but let's, let's tell the story. And, and look, there are ways of telling the story. There are ways you know, of, of telling a story that are not bound by what you would call historical accuracy. We talk about the creative license. So you, you tell a story so you can communicate the, the message more so than the accuracy. And, and, and that's not, you know, taking a cheap shot. That's just the way the arts works, right? I mean, when you, 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 you can exaggerate and embellish. So when you make a, a, a statement, whether it's a lyric in a song or, you know, or, or a line delivered on a stage. So you can, you can make that point. But, but again, we as, as Native communities, look, I've talked a lot about what we need to do for, you know, to, to bolster economies, you know, uh, making a local economy. This is a local economy element. If we start creating some of our own forms of entertainment, and then, and and we can essentially, I'm misusing the word a little bit, we can subsidize that by making it somewhat marketable to the outside as well. But but first and foremost, understanding that we're trying to advance our own people, and our own creativity, and we're trying to um, to be more accurate in telling our stories. Like I said, the the reason. I play so much Murray Porter on, on my shows here and in New York is because he is one of the few artists that is committed with every CD, every, you know, every time he pr produces uh, another album, he has at least three or four songs within, within those tracks that are geared specifically towards uh, one of our, our social issues. Almost, almost every time. And I'm not saying he's the only one be, because there are probably other people, but we don't, we, we don't even develop the venues so we can all be exposed to that. I mean, there should be, I mean, look, there should be a, um, um, a, uh, a music app where you can just listen to all, all native, uh, all native artists. I, I wanted to do a show here that was called, uh, a red, uh, a red shade of blues to do an all native blues show. I wanted to have a producer here. I'm still, you know, still hoping that I can get somebody because I don't think that I have the time to do it, but I think to do a one hour show or even a, uh, even a one hour show several times a week where we're, we're, we're playing the, this huge, uh, you know, family of, of blues artists that exist. I mean, every one of our communities has a, has a, you know, has a local house band, right? They have their own band that, that, you know, and, and more often than not, they're a blues band. And those guys are not just, you know, covering other, other uh, artist tunes. Those guys are creating, you know, native music, uh, you know, native themes in their music. Certainly, you know, uh, Pappy John's band and, and Murray Porter have. But we could, we could do that. So, I, again, not everything is, it has to be a huge lift. I mean, for somebody to come in here, somebody just says that they, that they want to do a, a blues show. They just got to show up here in the studio and do it. I, you know, I've got an open invita invitation to that. But creating, a, you know, a, a website or creating an, 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 an app or, you know, a, you know some, some music site where we can bring all, of, uh, all Native artists together, um, you know, get the, get the proper permissions and, and, and that kind of stuff. I think that would be a great idea. And that's probably, again, not an expensive venture. But these are the things that we need to do. You know... <laughs> 
even the Native American Music Awards was not started by a native. Nobody stepped up. I mean, I, I got to give my props to Ellen Bello. I mean, she's, she was a publicist who realized that Native people were being left out of everything, especially you know, the Grammys. That's, that was her initial work. But we don't even have our own advocates doing that, at least not, not to the extent that, that, that others have. So I think this is, again, where we need to step up, not only as individuals, but as communities to, to do more of this. There is no reason that we don't have uh, vibrant theater companies. Uh, at least in some of our territories. I mean, the Seneca Nation has a population of, you know, seven or 8,000 people. It only takes a small group to put a theater company together. And there's no reason that, that if, if a, a, a theater company puts together, uh, uh, you know, like, like I said, the play that I saw in New Jersey, it was only a five person cast. So it was a relatively small group that, that to put this show together. And that show went on the road and it had some success. But we could do the same thing. We could put, the, put together a theater company and let's create the need for a venue if, if, since one doesn't exist now. But let's, I mean, look, we, we have the opportunities. We have the skill sets. We have, we have actresses and actors. We have writers. We have musicians. And, and again, there is a cottage industry or, or several cottage industries, industries that can be built out of this stuff. So again, as I'm talking about trying to develop economically, now, is somebody going to, you know, make a million dollars, you know, creating a theater company? No, probably not. But we better have a different idea of what we're considering, you know, um, the measure of success. We need to do these things. So I, I think we do need to, to call on the people with the resources to help. But, you know, let, let this show be my own personal call out to let's begin the dialogue. Let's start that conversation. Let's, ha let's talk this conversation, right? Let, let's ha talk about putting together a, an organization that, that is going to encourage some of this stuff. And, and I got to tell you, um, we, we, you, you can look at any community and see the skills that exist, you know, uh, w the musical skills that exist. And uh, there's no reason that we can't put together you know, um, a better, you know, better venues and better opportunities. Because, you know, and I say better venues. As I mentioned earlier, one of the challenges is that music and alcohol, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll, right? <laughs> that, that, you know, we, there's, there's that. But there are other ways to, um, to encourage and, and to promote music beyond, beyond you know, in, in a smoky bar. And we should take those opportunities to do that. We can, we can do that. So... That's what my uh, what this show I want I want to talk about because if we're going to encourage the arts, then in, in a conversation, we need to encourage the the uh, the arts with action, and so that's part of what I'm what I'm trying to uh, part of what I'm trying to promote here. All right, a um, couple of things. I did do an event in New York last uh, last night, and uh, and again it was it was at a a, a bookstore overlooking the waterfront in uh, in, in Brooklyn. Um, it was, it was kind of a, a great opportunity to, to, to reach out to a, to a different audience. And again, even though New York city has got a hundred thousand native people, uh, between a hundred thousand, 150,000 native people living there, it's oftentimes hard to mobilize and to, and to reach the native community. You know, we, we had a fairly, fairly full house of, uh, of, of people who represented all kinds of diverse backgrounds. Um, that came out not only to hear me speak, but to hear uh, uh, Tony Blackman uh, perform. And these are these are great opportunities in the city. But but we don't create those those opportunities back here. And while we're still in somewhat um, uncharted uh, territory in, in terms of uh, what's going to take place with the, with the radio station that I do my New York City show on most of the time. Um, I still am committed to trying to provide a voice um, and a perspective to a New York City market. I'll still continue to do my Thursday shows, even out of my own studio, until um, uh, until we come up with with uh, either a resolution to, to the WBAI problem or come up with another solution uh, or, or another venue in New York. Um, I'm I am committed to doing that. I I think it's important because 
what that what that media market represents. When we talk about trying to do something that's going to be outreach, if we're ever going to do something, like I said, in in our in our communities, to um to encourage the arts, taking that to someplace like New York or Los Angeles is a way to help those artists uh, see realize some other commercial success. So you know, part of my outreach and you know and what I do in New York is to keep doors open. Um, because in spite of the, like I said, in spite of the number of native people that live there, it's a, it's a city of 10 million people, you know, almost double that when you include the surrounding areas. So I think that market is something that, uh, that we can appeal to if we create the, the attempts to appeal to that market. And, and that's why, um, I mean, I, I did that event last night. I took a train to a train to New York. Got there early enough so I could hang out with my uh, with some of my friends at WBAI and find out what the status of things were there. Then did the event, um, and then my plan was to take a bus home. And bus got canceled. I ended up I ended up staying all night in a bus station. And as much as I hate when these things you know go bad like that, I can't help but stay committed to wanting to do something in New York, even though you know, sometimes I'm spending the night in a train station or a bus station. Um, and, and I appreciate the support, my sponsors that I have for the show that I do here, um, because they, by supporting what I do here, they're supporting what I do there as well. So, uh, you know, I just want to put, want to put that out there. Um, uh, we will be doing a show here on, uh, on Tuesday next week. Uh, this show, we will not do a Saturday show. We'll be doing a Sunday show and the following, following week, which is the native American music awards. We will do a Sunday night show that night. So. Um, we'll go to Tuesday, Sunday, uh, for a couple of weeks here instead of uh, Tuesday, Saturday after, after the show. So just so, you know, just so you're aware. Um, so anyway, um, uh, this, uh, conversation about supporting arts and, uh, artisans is, um, uh, is an ongoing conversation and we're going to start to try to do a little bit more even here with what we've got uh, to do that. And, um, and look, reach out to me, reach out to me on Facebook. Anybody who's got any ideas or, or any collaborations that they, that they want to suggest. I'm, you know, I, I would love to, um, uh, to help, uh, help start something. That's why starting with a conversation, starting with a conversation right here. on let's talk native. I want to thank you for listening and, uh, we'll see you on Tuesday. Yahweh.